Now, here are some questions for you. Are disabled people and people with access needs able to travel easily? Are some types of transport worse than others? If you have a problem, can you let the right people know and get things fixed? At Parliament, we want to know the answers. You have a right to get the transport you need. And we have a duty to make sure the laws for disabled access are followed. Well, that's a clip from a video on social media promoting the work of the House of Commons Transport Select Committee. MPs from all parties who make up that committee are investigating how easy or otherwise it is for disabled people to use public transport. And from what they've heard so far, the conclusion is that disabled people are being excluded very often. Ian Stewart is a Conservative MP. He chairs the committee. Um, Ian Stewart, why did you decide to look into this now? Well, it's a question that the committee has looked at uh, on a number of occasions uh, over the years. And you know, there's quite a, a body of evidence that uh, available that uh, people with reduced mobility uh, are having difficulties. What we're looking at uh, in this inquiry is asking the, answering the question, are there sufficient laws and regulations in place? And the problem is one of enforcement uh, of these, or are there gaps in the, in the legislation? That, that need to be filled. Uh, the answer is probably going to be an element of both of those. Uh, but we, we thought it was important uh, to look at this in the round uh, and, and make a judgment about where interventions need to come. Doug Pawley has first-hand experience of this. He uses a wheelchair. He's a disability rights campaigner. Um, Doug, tell me what it is like for you then, the first hurdle you need to overcome if you personally want to go somewhere and use public transport. Good morning. Good the morning. big problem that I have is in attempting to plan and book accessible transport, trying to find out what services are accessible, whether you need to book in advance. Um, trying to work all that out takes much more energy and work than it does for a lot of non-disabled people. And, and, and so it can often be tempting to kind of almost give up from the start rather than even attempt to, to go, if you see what I mean. Yes. Tell me, just to give us a few examples of the experiences you have had when you try to plan and you do plan and still things go wrong okay so recently i was going um i was attempting to go for a weekend away and i was trying to find local accessible taxis and um, first lease um, the train company is required to provide details of local taxi companies, including accessible companies, and the one involved didn't. And then local councils are obliged to have a list of accessible taxis, predominantly for the purposes of ensuring that the people driving those taxis don't discriminate against wheelchair users but the council hadn't complied with its obligation to produce such a list and then eventually the council got back to me and told me that there weren't any accessible taxis at all in the town in which i was supposed to be traveling and and it was yeah it's it's that sort of struggle i mean in the end i had to get in there inaccessible taxi using a folding wheelchair go in a different wheelchair which then restricted what i could do whilst i was away um, but it's not just taxis it happens on coaches buses trains planes every form of public transport i, I experience similar difficulties ian stewart you've already concluded that disabled people are often excluded from public transport so what is it that you now want to know from people and um, people who are in doug's position well, first of all, we want to, to try and get a, an overall understanding of where the specific problems lie. Uh, and part of our call for evidence, there is a, a short survey uh, online uh, that people can fill in. And that will help guide us as to looking at, you know, is it more in the rail side or is it taxis or is this across the piece? Uh, it's trying to get a better picture of where the problems lie. And as I say, you know, Doug mentioned there that, you know, local authorities and rail companies companies have a duty, but that's not happening. Uh, that's not being enforced. Um, you know, who, who are the bodies that, that need to be enforcing these better? Is it the, the local authorities? Is it government agencies? Is it the transport operators? Where, where are the problems? You know, if, if things go wrong, you know, how well are the complaints handled? Uh, you know, so we're trying to get a good picture of, of understanding uh, the specific difficulties. Um, and then we can look at what the, the solutions might be. Ian Stewart, the, the, 
the difficulties have been discussed, haven't they, for a long time. The law to provide redress has been in place for a long time. Do you have any ideas yet how there could be some kind of simple to use means of redress for individuals? Well, that's very much part of what we want to look at. I mean, if there, there's quite a complex picture of, of laws and regulations in place. If you look, at, for example, at the Equality Act 2010, uh, part 12 of that, uh, you know, does uh, cover a, an overall right that transport must be accessible to all regardless of any disability. But it's how that, that then, you know, distills down into specific modes of transport. Uh, Doug mentioned the, you know, the very frustrating difficulty that uh, some passengers will have in actually planning a journey. Uh, now, there are solutions to that that don't require legislation. Uh, I was speaking, for example, to someone from Southern Trains uh, earlier this week, and they're about to pilot a new system that uh, they'll have a sort of mobile assistance unit available at stations so that people don't have to book in advance and there'll be people there to assist with ramps getting on trains or, or whatever it is. Uh, so, you know, we want to look at good practice as well and how that might be be, be spread more widely. But also let, let get me back just bring... to, are, are, there, are there going to be, you know, are there gaps in the law as well that we need to look to yes, fill? Yes, you, you said, let me just bring Doug in again because we're running out of time. Um, Doug, you are well known. Uh, you have taken transport companies to court um, and still, and you have won, and still you find yourself in this situation. So, if you were in charge now, what would you do to provide this simple-to-use means of redress? I think it's crucial that the people who experience the discrimination should not be expected to take individual legal action against major um, organisations. It, it, that is not a valid way of trying to ensure that the rights are met and that the law is enforced. And also, there's a problem that a lot of the regulators don't know or enforce their own laws in this respect. And some of my legal action has, has proven that. And, and so, I, I don't know what the ideal answer is, but I know what it shouldn't be, and that's expecting us to do this. Ian Stewart, just before we leave it, what's the best way then for anyone who wants to contribute to your committee's investigations to get involved with this? Well, the, the easiest way is to look at the, the Transport Committee's uh, website, which will come up with a simple uh, internet search. Uh, we are, are, are making the, the survey forms uh, available in a whole range of different formats. Uh, so there's information there on the website about how that uh, can be accessed together with uh, phone numbers uh, if, if further help or, or information is required. Uh, so the, the deadline for, our, uh, for evidence is the 20th of March. Uh, so there's still plenty of time uh, for okay. people to contribute. I mean, we, we want to get a really comprehensive picture of what uh, passenger experience is. Ian Stewart, MP, Chair of the Transport Select Committee and Doug Pawley, Disability Rights Campaigner. Thanks to both of you.